You are listening to an entertainment program put together by a company called Financial Ineptitude. Anything said on this show is not an endorsement or professional advice. Would you really want to tell a court of law you were suing us because you thought taking financial advice from two idiots on a podcast put out by Financial Ineptitude was a good idea? Really? Clown hat smiley face. Was I supposed to say that? Yeah. Or was I supposed to act that out? Hello and welcome to the China Shop. Everybody step inside. Got a great options episode here for you today. I'm Shopkeeper Dan. With me as always is Kyle, creator of FinancialNeptitude.com. Kyle's celebrating a big promotion today. (laughs) He's the new lead shuttlecock repairman here in the the China Shop. So you need your shuttlecock looked at? Kyle's the guy. I actually know how to fix those. (laughs) Do you? Yeah. I don't remember why or how. <laughs> no, I've actually fixed a couple of them in my day. Yeah, there you go. See, see, I was tuning in to your genuine talent. I was going to say, well done hitting that W on welcome. Welcome. Yeah, you nailed that one. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, come on into the shop with us today, folks. Sit back, relax. Rage against the hedge machine. I'd like to welcome any new listeners. We got a special edition show today. We're, we're doing a deep dive in the options Greeks. So if you are new to the shop, you might not want to start with this episode. No. Uh, but we are glad you're here. Got a lot of basic general stock trading knowledge at the, inside the Knowledge Center on financialnf2.com. Or uh, we got plenty of beginning trading episodes to listen. Uh, but you've come to a beginning options trading episode. So you don't know your stuff on stocks this is not going to make any sense and if you do it still might not make sense but we're going to try and explain it nice and clear sorry i zoned out completely yeah <laughs> oh me too i don't even know what i'm saying all right well uh, all right okay. so neither of us are experts let's just say that right off the bat here oh yeah uh, far from expert here. we'll try to post any links to anything that we're referencing so that way you can uh you know check on it yourself uh but this is also this also helps us out just having the discussion on it trying to increase our knowledge so some of this we may be looking Mm -hmm. up as we talk about it (laughs) it's true it's true Uh, but hey that's the beauty of the internet you don't know something try and look it up it's no excuse not to know when you just google it speaking of which (laughs) um i googled the greeks and so now i've got uh, the investopedia page pulled up mostly frat Frat houses? <laughs> yeah. Sorority houses? <laughs> Actually, surprisingly, no. Oh. <laughs> All right. So what do we start with here? There's four main ones that I think that people should really be paying attention to. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other ones that are like the minor Greeks that I don't even know what they are. Uh, I don't think you really need to know unless you're really sophisticated. And and when you say options Greeks, what what do you mean? Okay. Well, yeah, let's take a step back then. (laughs) So an options premium is basically made up of multiple components that come up to get that price, the the price per contract. Uh, There's there's four main components that go into that. Uh, I'm just going to give the Greek names, the Delta, Gamma, Theta, and Vega. Um, The Theta and Vega basically make up most of the, the, the contract value. That's the volatility... Uh, sensitivity and the time value for that contract. The delta and gamma kind of give you an indication of how that price is going to move. So all of these are describing how the value of an options contract is going to change. Exactly. That, con- that contract can is you know it's 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 not so straightforward itself on the surface because you can have a call or a put and you can have either bought or sold them. But to simplify it. It's basically just an agreement to to trade stock in the future at a set price. Yeah, it's like a pre-negotiated so, sale or yeah, purchase. Yeah. So if Kyle and I negotiate, I'm going to buy his car in June for a thousand dollars. Depending on what happens to the value of his car between now and next June, it's going to change the value of that contract that we make. Mm-hmm. If it, you know. Uh, so these Greek letters, these Greek letters are numbers we can use to describe how it's going to change based on what happens. If the price of the car that I'm buying goes way up as it gets wildly popular and there's 
not not many out there. Well, then the value of my contract that I made with Kyle at that set price is going to go up correspondingly. But how? How much? You know, right. that, that, those are those are the the what the Greeks are trying to describe. Well, what you're talking about right there, the main components of those two is the delta and the gamma. So maybe we should just jump right into those two. All right. So so the delta. What is the delta? The delta is how much the options price should move for like a one dollar change in the underlying stock. So I'm looking at I got Virgin Galactic's chart pulled up here. I'm looking okay. at the the strikes on there on TD Ameritrade. If you let me walk you through that. If you type in a stock, uh, pull up the the profile where it gives you like that quick summary view. There's a button you can click that says options chain. If you click on that, it'll pull up another chart. It'll show you all the chains. But to get to the options Greeks where it says calls, uh, there's a little calculator looking thing right next to it. If you click on that, then it's going to pull up uh, the delta, gamma, theta, vega, and rho. As well as implied volatility, the bid, the ask, all that stuff. When you pull up an options chain, it shows you a, a list of the available options that are being traded for any given stock. Like Virgin Galactic stock, you might see there are $30 calls. There's going to be $35 calls. There's going to be $40 calls. Yeah. And all of those, you can get those expiring different dates. So when yep. you pull up the options chain, that's it's like a menu of all the available options that are being traded, bought and sold. So you got to do a little more digging to actually get to these these uh, values, but I've got them pulled Great up guy. here. I'm looking at the thirty five dollar eight thirteen space call. Uh, it's trading right now at about a dollar forty a contract. If so I've... right now, if I wanted to buy a call, if I wanted to buy a contract that allowed me to purchase a hundred shares of Virgin Galactic at thirty five dollars. That contract would cost me uh, $140? Yep, that is correct. Okay. Okay, now I'm looking at the the delta value is right over there on the uh, left side. Uh, it's sitting at 0.549. So the delta value is going to be a number between 1 and negative 1. Uh, it'll be negative if it's a put contract. Yeah. Uh, so what this is telling me is that if the stock uh, see, it's trading at 35.24 right now, if it was to jump up to 36.24, then it should go, the value of that contract should rise by f- roughly 55 cents. Which equates to $55 in real money. Right. So if I bought the contract at uh, $140 and a day goes by and Virgin Galactic stock goes up a dollar a share, I can now sell that contract for about $195. Roughly, but you're still going to have Roughly. other factors that, that go into there. That's like instantaneous. Not, not a, because you still right. have Theta and Vega and other things that are going to change as that price right. changes. These, Yeah, it's not quite but that it's simple. But yeah, it's a rough estimate. Uh, there's also Gamma. And Gamma is a little interesting because Gamma is kind of how you predict how that price change is going to affect the Delta. Does that make sense? Okay. So the delta, that number of, of how that describes how the option's going to move up and down with the, with the dollar price movement, it, it itself changes as the stock price moves. Yes. And gamma describes the rate of that change. Yes. And that gamma value is going to be highest when it's at the money. It's going to decrease as it gets further out the money or deeper in the money. Okay. Okay. So why why does the gamma decrease when you go deeper <laughs> in the money? Like, at, well, as as the stock's going up. Okay, so you gotta think of it this way: as you get closer or deeper in the money, the actual delta value is going to start approaching one, because eventually it's going to get to the point where it's basically the value of the stock. It's going to move one for one with the stock because there's less speculation. It's so far in the money that. Uh, it's guaranteed to be worth something at, at expiration. And it's mostly going to be worth whatever the stock is worth, like the difference between the strike call and the actual price. Mm. So, so because gamma is like a measure of the rate of change of the delta, when it's at the money, that's going to be the peak value of gamma. As you get further away, as you get further away from that, then yeah, that gamma is going to start tailing off. So, right, because you can never get higher than one or lower than negative one. Or so you hit a point where the rate of change just goes gets smaller and smaller. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. 
and it, it'll never be and, and it'll never be like if, if it's positive, it'll never be exactly zero. And if it's negative, it'll never be exactly zero, but it'll just keep getting smaller and smaller the closer to zero it gets. Pretty much. For, for, for out of the money. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I guess it makes sense. <laughs> Ooh, all right. This is already off to a bit of a rough start. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think everybody's asleep. Is anybody with us still? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gamma is always best. gamma is always positive too. That's another thing to note. Okay, okay, just shut up and tell me how I can get rich <laughs> off of options, Kyle. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this option chain. Let's let's pull up that eight thirteen thirty five dollar strike call. Uh, the gamma you can see on the thirty five is actually the highest value. If you look above and below it, as you get deeper in the money or further out the money, that gamma value starts to decrease. And you can kind of look and see. Look at the delta value at like the 35 and the 38 versus the 35 and the 36. And you see how they're, they're tailing off, but they're not tailing off at like a, in a linear fashion. The difference oh. in delta from 35 to 36 is, what is that, 55 to 42.6. And then the difference between 35 and 38 is almost half the value. Oh, wow. Yeah. Gamma. Son of a bitch. <laughs> so you can see gamma working right there before your eyes. So what the gamma is actually measuring then is it's telling you how much that delta is going to change for a change in uh, one point of the underlying security or another dollar in the underlier. Right. Sometimes it'll bring the delta up. Sometimes it'll bring it down. Uh, I should say sometimes it brings the delta up a lot. Sometimes it brings it up a tiny amount. Right. I read somewhere that delta is used to be a rough calculation as to the, the percent chance that option is going to expire in the money or out of the money. Really? i never heard that. I've heard it used to hedge. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I Just this morning, uh, as I was perusing uh, options stuff, uh, one, one of the I can't remember if it was a Seeking Alpha or, or a, a Tasty Trades article, um, but yeah, it was saying like if your delta is at 55, you can say there's a roughly 55% chance it'll expire in the money. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> have to start paying attention to that. Maybe uh, whenever we start buying calls from now, we should write down whatever the delta of that call is and see what that if that percentage actually tracks. Yeah. Um, I know that I used to buy options with a lower delta than I do now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't like going less than like 30 on my deltas. Yeah. Because yeah, you want it to uh, move a decent amount if the underlying moves. The only, yeah, well, well, I guess we'll get to Vega. I was like, the, the only, the only saving grace for that is, is Vega, but we're not there yet. No. <laughs> Okay, so we talked about how you can use the delta to kind of hedge. So another way that you can use that delta is if you're selling like this uh, this $35 contract. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to sell one contract, this delta is also telling you that you have to buy 55 shares roughly in order to be delta neutral. So that means that if you sold that contract and the stock price started going up, if you bought 55 shares also, the value of those 55 shares would increase the same rate the value of your contract is decreasing. Ah. Uh. So remember how Rich is always talking about how he always wanted to be trading the volatility of the uh, options contracts? So that's how he was doing it. He was using the delta calculation to figure out how many shares he'd have to buy for every contract he traded. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so it kept him delta neutral. Yes. And and you can make money by being delta neutral. Well, yeah, because well, I guess that'll get us into the next bit. The Vega. So the delta and the gamma, <laughs> the delta and the gamma tell us how the options contract is going to move based on the price of the stock itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the volatility and the theta are the things that actually make up the value of the premium, right? The premium being the amount that's above any intrinsic value. Yes, how much you're actually paying to own these contracts. Right. Yes. Right. If I'm buying an in the money contract, Virgin Galactic, thirty dollars, and it's at it's trading at thirty five, those contracts have an intrinsic that five dollar value. It's built in. Right? Yes. 
uh, the premiums, everything on top of that that I'm going to pay. Yes. So let's start with Theta. That's the one that we talk about the, lo- the most. I think that's the one that most people need to understand in order to be able to successfully trade these things. Theta burn. Yeah, theta is the measure of the time decay of an option. So that's the dollar amount. If you look at the actual calculated number on this space contract that we've been talking about, the $35 weekly, uh, the theta value right now is a negative 0.133. So that's telling us how much value that contract is going to lose each day just because of the passage of time. Right. So you, you got to... <laughs> That thing's got to go up more than if it's at two cents, you're losing two dollars a day. It's got to go up more than two dollars just to stay even. Why'd you say two cents? Sorry, I thought that you were describing a theta with two. Oh no 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 negative point one three three. So that's thirteen cents. Ooh, yeah, even worse. Got to go up more thirteen dollars just to stay even. <laughs> thirteen cents. Yeah, you multiply everything by hundred to get to the actual dollar values you're going to be trading at. Yes. So uh, yeah, if you own one of these contracts each day, or at least one the next day from now, like when you open it up in the morning, if the stock price stayed at the same level, you're basically lost thirteen dollars just because of the yeah. time. And time is such an important thing because uh, the more time you have, then the more chance you have for that contract to go into the money, right? Yeah. So as you start losing that time, then you start getting less and less chance of that thing expiring valuable. Well, and and uh, I know Kyle, you pursue an option strategy where you're selling contracts, so the theta is making you money every day. Yes, that's theta is my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're selling to open instead of buying to open, theta is your best friend. I always think of the Iron Maiden song, "Time is always on my side." <laughs> yeah, for all you Iron Maiden fans out there, they're they're probably one of their least popular '80s albums. But I, I don't it. think I've ever heard that song. I even have heard the remake. Time is on my side. Yeah, I don't know that one. No, the one from <laughs> Fallen. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. <laughs> right over my head. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, anyway, underrated back to options. You don't want to talk uh, about underrated Denzel Washington movies? <laughs> that oh, wasn't John Goodman in that one too? Yeah, he's the one who's singing that. Time that mo- is on my. That side. movie was badass. Yeah, sorry. That was a really good movie, Fallen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, stop trading <laughs> theta. I, I honestly, uh, I don't look at the theta number. I'm not going to lie. No. I don't, I, when I'm trading, um, I just, I just know that, uh, if, if I'm trading a weekly or two, two weeks out option, I know that I want to get in and out of that trade as fast as possible because the theta is going to be so big that the value is just going to disappear. Yeah. And the theta drop off is not a linear thing either. It gets more. Uh, extreme the the shorter the time left on it, I guess you'd yeah. say, right? The close the closer you are to expiration, the worse that theta burn gets. Yes, and there's a big drop off at about thirty days. So, like, but anything over thirty days is going to hold that value, that theta value, reasonably well. Once you get to less than thirty days, then it starts exponentially increasing how much that theta burn is is taking away from your the value of your contract. Mm. So yeah, like you said, you you. You maybe don't look at the actual number, and I don't really typically look at it too, but I have an understanding of how it works, and I think that's the important thing. Yeah. When you're yeah. picking contracts to purchase, buying a 30-day contract, if it's something that you want to hold for a month, it's probably not the best idea. What you should probably be looking at doing is looking at a 90-day contract and holding it for the 30 days and getting out at the end of that 30 days. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Those, are the, the, those are the only two types of trades I do anymore with options. It's either I'm trading weeklies to get in and out on them one or two day trade or I'm buying options over 60 days out looking to sell them before that 30 day. Yeah. Before that 30 day corner gets hit. And then when the options that I'm selling to generate my income, I'm looking at 45 to 30 day expiration contracts, right? Because that's kind of the sweet spot for when you get the best bang for your buck as far as taking advantage of that decay. All right. Can we get to my favorite Vega? Yes. And he's not just a Street Fighter 2 character anymore. <laughs> All right, Vega. Um, okay, I'm reading the Investopedia page here, and it says many people confuse Vega and volatility. Volatility measures the fluctuations of the underlying asset, but Vega measures the sensitivity of the price of an option to changes in volatility. Yes. So what does that mean? An increase in volatility will increase the prices of all the options on an asset, and decrease will cause them all to decrease. Yes. So 
like, for example, I currently have some BlackBerry calls. BlackBerry today is trading at like $10, 40 some cents. Yep. And I've got these calls that expire uh, about 45, 50 days from now. And the strike price is $43. I do not believe BlackBerry will get to $43. Mm-hmm. But these things were cheap. And I bought them because I do believe BlackBerry will make a move that will increase its volatility. Mm-hmm. So when when it goes through a one week period of like, holy crap, it's really shooting up and, and down, up or down. Uh, uh, well, these are called, so they just be up but anyway. As the volatility increases, the Vega will, much like the Vega's describing, it's like Vega's think of it as the delta of volatility, as delta is the price, Vega is the volatility. Like as that volatility goes up, the value of that contract goes up by the amount of the Vega. And uh, so those those forty three dollar strike options, ah, it's not getting to forty three, but when I see that volatility spike on on BlackBerry. I will. I will get to sell those for more than I bought them for. Because the bag is going to increase the value. You say forty three or forty. Uh, forty three dollar strike. Which uh, expiration? Uh, September was it seventeenth? Uh, yeah, September seventeenth. They're currently 17th. trading okay. at uh, eleven and a half cents. Yes. Okay, Vega on that is point zero zero three right now. Implied volatility yep. is currently 211. Damn, that seems like that's already pretty high. Well, I see them up at 1400 <laughs> before. <laughs> it may not be a good bet. I may have made a bad trade, but oh, it's, that, it's cheap the, though. The it's it is cheap. Uh and yeah, I so I I I'm banking on, you know, the the volatility going up. Uh, and and changing the value of those contracts, I have also experienced it the other way. I have held some contracts that had the volatility in the underlying go down, and mm-hmm. I lost money on the contracts even as the price of the underlying was going up. Right. <laughs> so, no, I mean, not a lot. It wasn't like soaring it, up higher. That's that's the whole strategy that Rich is using, though. That's exactly what he's using. He's buying or yep. selling contracts on ones that have extremely high volatility, banking on it coming down, returning to you know whatever its average should be. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I'm looking at your calls right now. Okay, so the September 17, forty three dollar calls. Like you said, they're trading at eleven between eleven and twelve cents. That's the bid and the ask. Uh, the delta on those, 0.048. So really, it's not going to take much of a move for you to get another five cents of value on those contracts. Oh, yeah. You get a, 50, yeah. 50% gain. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think it's that bad of a bet, but I don't think that Vega is going to be making up a very large component of that, that contract. I think that's going to be more the price change in the underlying. I think if you see that stock well, jump up to 12 or 13, then you're, you're probably going to see a boost from both, but I think Delta is probably going to be the bigger component of that. We'll just have to revisit once it happens or fails to happen. I think we should. Yeah. I like it. Oh, yeah. How's that price AMC doing? 34 even. 34! <laughs> Blackberry 1050. Yeah. Anyway. This- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, so is. so uh i i often ha- i have read this on more than one place that the volatility can move the the price of the option more than the underlying yes and i think one of those like ocgn is one of the stocks that i like to trade or sell contracts on because that volatility has been so high for so long where like right a, a contract that's Let's see, a stock that's trading at seven dollars, you can sell a seven fifty excuse me, a seven fifty call on that contract for or that stock for over a dollar a contract. Fucking insane. Yeah, that that's that's good money right there. That's such a huge move that, that people are trying to price in on these options that I mean, oh yeah, I'll profit on that every day of the week. <laughs> yeah, how <laughs> how many months have you been selling OCGN contract? Uh since March. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of tailed off a little bit, but the getting's still good. Right. 
Well, here's another thing that you can use the these the volatility and all these other uh, another way to use the options. You don't have to necessarily be trading the options, but you can start looking at them. And if you see uh, the contracts of like one of the stocks that you really like, like really starting to to increase in value, even though the stock's not doing much, that means that there's something coming up. Like pe- like investors are or the people who are selling these, the market makers are pricing in a movement. Yeah. Yeah, they're pricing it into the option that they think that they think is going to happen. Yes, and sometimes that can happen before like the news happens, even. And one of the ways that this happens is with earnings calls, ah. and that's usually where you get burned the biggest on on your Vega component of the contract. Um, earnings are such an unknown that the price of that contract will go up before the actual earnings happens. The day after earnings. The volatility suddenly disappears now because now that outcome is known. The the earnings that's, happened. Everyone knows what it is. Yeah, that's what happened to me on on my well, the ones that have my Vega slate. It's Bristol Myers Squibb. Pull up the. Uh, can you get, give us the uh, the prices, the value, or the values before you bought it and after you bought it, so that we can kind of illustrate that. Uh, yeah. Give me a second to pull up my history here. Yeah, I I remember it because. I I held it through earnings and I missed my opportunity. I had two opportunities to sell it yep. at a slight profit. I and remember. If they they were both in the same morning and then by the end of the day I was at significant losses. <laughs> okay, so I bought on it was July 23rd. I bought BMY July 30th calls. Uh-huh. Uh, sixty nine dollar calls at uh, uh, seventy cents a contract. Let's also say too, the stock had been trading at about sixty eight, sixty seven, sixty eight. It did not really move a whole lot during this whole time. It no, it didn't. It didn't. Um, and then let me pull up Bristol Myers Squibb chart. Where was their earnings? Yeah, and they had earnings on the twenty eighth of July, and. They did. They did get up over sixty nine dollars yep. as high as sixty nine twenty five. So I had, uh, I had on the morning, morning of the 29th when it popped up to sixty eight eighty two, then down to sixty eight sixty, and then by that afternoon it had been up to sixty nine twenty, uh, and then it it but it finished the day at sixty eight thirty. So by the time it hit that end of the day, the value of those contracts. Instead of being seventy some cents, uh, they were down to like forty. Yep, like that, almost half the value by the end of the day. Yes, it was. It was just really disheartening. I was like, "Why didn't I sell those?" <laughs> and they expire worthless tomorrow. And the same thing happened to me with Pepsi. Pepsi puts mm-hmm. that I bought. I was stubborn and decided to hold one of those contracts till after earnings, and I lost almost all the value of it. Yeah, yeah. That. That'll learn you. I haven't had much luck with my runners lately. <laughs> so bottom line is uh, uh, pay attention to, if you wanted to use options contracts, uh, the, trying to bet on a move during earnings season uh, is very expensive and very unlikely to actually pay off. Yeah, you're better off doing it with shares. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that premium... We're talking about market makers pricing it in at premium. Everything that goes on top of the value and what, why their value is assigned, why there is value assigned to out of the money contract. That premium inflates ahead of those earnings and deflates immediately after them, yep. no matter which way the stock is going. Yes. Uh, and so, so if, if it's tough, it's tough to do those options plays around earnings. I, think. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Uh, but you have to learn. You have to understand these Greeks to to be able to see that and, and know why that's happening. I you know yes. I was really frustrated when we first got into options. And I bought some silver calls, and I was like, "Kyle, silver's going up, and I'm losing money. I don't understand options." Ah! <laughs> or when you you traded one of your first straddles, <laughs> it lost money yeah. on both ends of it, and you're like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bought a call and a put, and lost money. They both, huh. yeah, really, really. Fucking, it's tough to wrap your head around it until you get into the Greeks and you start to see like, oh, look at all these things, these different factors that affects an options contract that doesn't affect shares. Right. Shares is really straightforward. I bought the shares. They have a value. That value goes up and down. 
done. Options. Uh, but options, so many other factors that, that affect the price of that contract. That's why day traders love them, though. Because mm-hmm. you can get, if, I mean, if you're using them to get in and out real quick, like one of the main ways that options, I think, are meant to be used, uh, yeah. like you can, you, you can use them to really gain some good leverage. Instead of buying, you know, a thousand shares and spending a thousand times the share price, you can pick up ten contracts for a fraction of that, and you're not risking nearly as much either, because the most you can ever lose is the premium. Yep. So. Yeah. 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 Pros and cons. Pros and cons. <clears throat> All right. Should we review here? Yeah. Let's let's review first. We got the delta. All right. What's the delta, Dan? Delta is the number used to describe how much value is going to be added or taken away in course with a corresponding one dollar price movement in the underlying stock. Yes. So if I'm doing Virgin Galactic, if I have a Virgin Galactic call option, the delta is telling me how much value will be added or taken away to that. Virgin Galactic contract if Virgin Galactic stock moves up or down a dollar. And then the gamma? Ah, the gamma. Those uh, are the radiation rays that attacked Dr. Bruce Banner that turned him into the Incredible Hulk. I can't argue with that. So we can (laughs) (laughs) imagine gamma rays are what shock the Delta into beefing up like the Incredible Hulk or shrinking down. That's a like long roundabout analogy, but okay. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going. Uh, <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, gamma, gamma, yeah, it describes the rate of the change of the delta. Yes. So that, that amount of delta will change along with everything else, and gamma tries to describe how it will change. So delta and gamma are basically telling you how the option price is going to move. Mm, yes. Theta and vega tell you how that price has come up with like what makes up the value the intrinsic extrinsic value of that contract yes volatility in time theta being the value of time and vega being the sensitivity to volatility they all all will be your friend if you let them so there's a whole (laughs) bunch of other ones but i don't even want to mention them because i don't understand them i don't think there's any real point in understanding them as far as i'm aware uh all of the, they call them like the secondary or second level Greeks or third level. They're all used for very uh, advanced, complicated options trading strategies that I don't know about. Yeah, and I think it's because you need, uh, it's saying that like computer software can quickly compute these and account for them. So I think it's more to do with algorithms because a person is mm-hmm. not going to be able to pay attention to that many things. Yes. Yeah, it's true. You can only pay attention to so many things at one time. When you're doing your research, you can, I mean, Theta, you don't have to really babysit. Theta just kind of gives you an idea of, Theta just gives you an idea of how much time you bought, basically, right? Yeah. Vega is telling you, you don't even really have to look at Vega, really. You can look at the implied volatility, and that'll tell you more. I look, I like the implied volatility because it tells me how much the price is in the past has been swinging, like the highs and the lows. It's kind of giving you an idea how how much that price moves, right? Yeah. A stock with higher volatility is experiencing more extreme price swings. So that means you're more likely to have a chance to have that contract in the money at some point. Yeah, like if you look at the difference of when we were looking at AMC options back in May versus looking at AMC options in June. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> like the volatility went through the roof on that stock. So all of a sudden, buying a, buying a call option $5 out of the money is super expensive. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, and that's why, because the implied volatility is so high. Yeah, and meaning meaning the, that the people buying and selling options contracts know it's the volatility is so high. That means, yeah, $5 move, that can happen. Yep. But you look at a stock like Ford, and it's like, a $5 move? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody's like, those options are going to be cheap. <laughs> yeah. Pennies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Ford is... But for the listener not informed, Ford's trading at what, like 12, around 12 or 13 still? 13.70. Yeah, it's not going to make a, a, a 33% move in the next week. No, probably not. Not unless some major catalyst happens. But, oh man, if it did, 
you don't want to be holding those then. <laughs> right? The volatility would really increase the value of those call options. Yeah. Shall we, do we have anything else you want to talk about uh, the strategies that, that you're using? Do you use any of these Greeks when you're trading? Uh, I like doing a screener for volatility. I like to find higher volatility stocks. And I like to go in and map out the levels of where the supports and resistances are. And then mm-hmm. those are the contracts that I like to sell because with the higher volatility, that Vega component of the underlying price is much, much higher, much more lucrative as far as when it comes to selling those. Now, when you sell a call contract, is it always covered or you, do you sell uncovered calls? I always do covered, either cash secured puts or covered calls. Okay, so if you sell one contract, you own 100 shares of the underlying. Yeah, or I'd be selling a put just to try to get a position in there. Uh, I I found these days most of my options trading is uh, like a day trade. Yeah, I'm, I'm aiming to I'm aiming to get in and get out quick on a big move. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm looking at like just out the money calls or puts, and I'm looking around 50 delta. Uh, I used to go lower because because uh, it's like wow if I get them around the twenty twenty delta or point two oh then when it goes up like it's it's much more of like a explosive lottery ticket win like oh my god right these options I made so much so much of a percentage gain on them but uh, uh, now that I'm like day trading them and I'm trying to ride like one solid leg of movement on an underlying uh, yeah I find the ones uh, as, as Vico walks you through uh, the ones around. 50 are are it's it's like they're just out of the money uh and you can ride that wave of like disney's at 170 and i buy 171 50 calls right and disney moves up to 174 i can sell those and i and i've I've made a a good chunk of change plus it also seems like you get a bit of a boost once it actually gets into the money too because you start getting some intrinsic value too so if you're getting them just outside on a stock that you think is moving up Mm -hmm. and it does happen it seems like it goes up a lot quicker once it hits that threshold where it's it's now in the money i i do find uh also if if like uh, like when i was like when amc was so volatile uh i was trying to and i did all right uh, i was selling deeply in the money covered calls Mm -hmm. trying to trying to sell those at at the peaks yeah so as the as the price retreated it allowed me to hold the shares but not lose the value Yep, as the the value of that covered call I sold goes way down, and uh, then you almost can, almost penny for penny. Yeah, and then you can buy it back and keep your shares. Buy it back and repeat. Yeah, yep. you still have my shares, and then it goes back up. I can sell another one. I did the same thing. I think when AMC is right around sixty, I sold a couple thirty dollar cover calls. <laughs> right. Oh, nice. Yeah, for so much, so <laughs> much money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't do it as well as I could have on my account, but I did help Jen. I mean, get basically, she got her AMC shares for free. Yeah, through the month of, through the month of June, selling covered calls and buying them back, and paid paid for the value of all the shares. Yep. Like, okay, can't lose now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold them forever. Anyhow, all right. So there you have it. Options Greeks, they are valuable to know, uh, but really, I think gaining an understanding of them, part of that process, and why it's considered so important, is it forces you to to pay attention to how things affect the options. So if I yeah. learned about the Greeks and I I bought that straddle that that I that I lost bo- on both legs, you know, I would know why. Right. Whereas before it was just a mystery to me. I was like scratching my head like how could I have lost? <laughs> no, it's a great point. Yeah, I mean you don't really necess- the most important one really that I pay attention to when I'm looking at an option contract is just the time that the contract has. And uh, I mm-hmm. like to know the Delta too. I like to know how much that stock and they, they start to kind of become intuitive too. Once you traded them enough, but you really got to do, mm-hmm. you really got to put in a little bit of work beforehand to kind of learn how they work. Yeah. Pay attention to them, figure them out. And then once you start to know them, then you don't really have to spend a whole lot of time, like looking at the Greeks themselves directly. I don't think. Yeah. Like I said, I glance at the Delta. I might, you know, when I'm making a choice on which options contract yeah. to buy for the day trade, I'll look at the Delta and, and use that as a guide. I look at the Delta and I look at the volatility. And that's those are the two main ones that I like to look at. And uh, it's always always more safe to be a net seller than a net buyer of <laughs> it options. Still is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it always will be. Yeah, I think so. 
Well, I mean, that's just the way they're written, right? Because the person who sells the contract has unlimited risk. Yeah. The person who's buying it has less risk, but unlimited potential. So there's got to be a trade-off. The trade-off is that you're paying a premium and the premium is set to the point to where it becomes now motivation for someone to sell it. Because you need someone to sell these contracts in order to actually buy them. If nobody wanted to sell them, then nobody be, you wouldn't be able to buy them. Yeah. Somebody's got to be willing to write it. Exactly. Well said. All right. Uh, there's one other thing that I wanted to talk about um, while we're doing this discussion, and that's uh, these options alerts. Oh, yeah. I wanted to take one. I, I pulled one up, and I wanted to kind of treat it like a logic puzzle. Let's both let's read through this thing, and let's just try to figure out how much information we can get out of it, and how that information is useful. Okay. Because I think that's the we were following these things before, but we didn't really know what we were following. That is true. So I think we've got a better handle on it, and uh, I think this is a fun little exercise. It should be helpful to some people. All right. What's the, what's the alert? All right. So I just pulled up Benzinga and looking at the uh, list of. 10 consumer discretionary socks showing unusual options today. First one I'm going to look at is the QuantumScape call. Okay, QuantumScape. I remember they they had the, that huge, huge run up and down earlier this year. They did. All right, so there was a call sweep with bullish sentiment on 8 thir- uh, 813 expiration, 26 strike, 570 open interest, the volume of 3.4 thousand. Or 3.400. Yeah, 3.4 thousand. 3.4K. All right, so let's take a look at the first part there. Uh, it's a call sweep as opposed to a call trade. So the sweep means okay. that somebody wanted this now. Right now. Right now. So they they bought at whatever people were asking. They said, I'll pay it. Right. And that's where the bullish sentiment comes into. So we know that somebody did this right now. So they're paying either the bid or the ask, depending on if they're buying or selling, right? Mm-hmm. So the fact that it's bullish means that the trade was executed closer to the ask price. They're paying whatever somebody was willing to do it for. So that means that this is somebody that wants to get a position. They're buying calls and they want to get it right now because they think something's going to happen. They're willing to pay whatever the market price is right now. That's the first key bit of information. Uh, The next bit of information, we've got the open interest at 570 on these contracts and a volume of 3.4 thousand. Okay, so 570 of them existed before this trade. Yes. Wow. So this trade. Somebody said, uh, okay, there's, there's that many exist, but I want 3.4 thousand of these. Oh, uh, sorry. God damn it. I'm reading this wrong. The actual trade was 935 contracts. They're, that's the volume for the day. Okay. But the point is that if the, the volume of the actual alert trade was more than the open interest, then we, we know now that the person who was, these aren't new contracts. These have to be new contracts. Yeah. These aren't contracts that somebody's offloading. Right. And that's always one of the things that we had a hard time figuring out. Is somebody selling these or are they buying these? Well, now we've got two key pieces of information that tell us that somebody bought these. Yeah. One, that it was a call sweep on the ask side of the end. And two, there were more that they were bought than there was actual open interest. So that person couldn't have been selling them because they didn't exist. Well, they could have been writing the contract though, right? They could have, but then that would have sold at the bid. Ah, deduction right yeah so now this little bit this little line here a call option sweep that happens to be bullish expiring in four days 935 contracts at a 26 dollar strike that suddenly becomes a lot more useful information yeah we know that somebody made a bullish trade trying to get in to position as quickly as he possibly could for a move that he thinks is going to go up right to try and control as many quantum scape shares as possible yes because that's what options do they allow you to control the leverage of the underlying shares so here's the things that you need to pay attention to, I think, when it comes to an options alert. Is it a trade or a sweep? If it's a trade, that doesn't really tell you a whole lot. A sweep tells you a lot more. Mm-hmm. Is it bullish or bearish in sentiment? And all that's telling you is, are they buying these at the bid or at the ask? That's very important, too, because that tells you which end of that sweep was. Whoa. If that sweep was at the ask, then he's buying them. If it's at the bid, then that means he's selling them. So... How many, what was the number of contract, 900 and some contracts? 935 contracts. Open interest prior to the day was 570. Wow, it's almost double the open interest. Something, if you recall, Sarah Glass mentioned. That's, that's why that's important. Because if there's more contracts traded on the alert, then you know that it's a new contract. Well, no, some, something that I remember her saying was, if it's an odd number of contracts. Oh, that it's, part, yeah. Sorry. It's more likely it's more likely to be uh not a hedge. Right. Cuz it's in in theory 
uh, this person could have bought 900 some contract call contracts to hedge their short selling of QuantumScape. That is correct. So, but because it's not a nice round number, because it's not a nice price, because people tend to to do their trades in round numbers, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. If uh, they're hedging, I should say, like they buy this or buy or short this many shares and then hedge this many co- uh, options contracts. But uh, if it's an odd number, she said that, that that odds are it's somebody buying the options contracts to make an options play. Mm-hmm. They're not hedging anything. Uh, okay, I forgot about that one. That's good, but of useful information too. Yeah, it's, she said it's not a hundred percent rule, but it's 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 good one of those know. most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time, that will hold true. Everything about this sweep looks like somebody made a a, a play. Yeah, they went long on QuantumScape. Well, I think the QuantumScape. Looking at their chart, the fact that they're up ten percent today, I think the person who <laughs> made that bet has already moved on. <laughs> yeah, and that's the because that's what I always wonder. And it's like, uh, yeah, that person buy them and already dump them. Like you almost have to keep an eye on the uh, the volume too to try to watch for another one to come in to see if they've gotten out. Like you can't just look for the initial entry. Because the more we learn about these contracts, uh, you're not usually holding these things to expiration. Yeah, it's true. Man, QuantumScape likes to move. I'm just looking at their chart. Ooh. <laughs> we got dropped down to the very next one. There's a call option trade with bullish sentiment. August 20th on BABA. 200 contracts at $200 strike. Oh, wow. And prior to that move, there was 13,326 open contracts. So that's an example of one that I probably wouldn't pay too much attention to. Uh, all right, Dan. Yeah, I think uh, I think that'll sum up our laser focus into the Greeks of options contracts. Uh, really, just a op- trading options contracts can really be intimidating at first, but if if you do develop that understanding, you you'll see there's a lot more profit to be made in options than there is in shares most of the time. Yep, it's also a chance to lose a lot faster too. But <laughs> yeah, that's why you want to understand them. Yep. You want to understand them. <laughs> that's that's why if you're doing weeklies, you want to get in and out. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that helps some people out. Well, yeah, folks, we really do hope uh, that that it's helping you out. If you do have uh, questions, you know, hit hit us up. Feel free to ask two bulls at financialneptitude dot com or seven two five twenty two bulls. Phone number. Uh, let us know. We'd love to to dive into some stuff that you guys are interested in and you want to know more about. So just hit us up and let us know. Yep. Helps us too because we yeah. get to learn. A lot of times you ask questions we don't know, <laughs> so yeah, gives us an excuse yeah. to go look it up. Just the the whole heart of the show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let's figure this shit out. Yes. All right. Stay tuned until next time. We're coming at you with a regular weekly show here in a few days. We all just wish the best for all of you, and uh, we'll all, you know get rich overnight trading options contracts. Now that we know the Greeks. Yay! Yay. <laughs> All right. Till- <laughs> Happy trades, folks. Bye. Two Bulls in a China Shop is an entertainment program, and all thoughts and opinions expressed in the show belong to the hosts and not of any company. They are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security or investment product. It is only intended to provide entertainment about stocks and the financial industry of trading. If you make trades based on what you hear in this show, you assume all risks for those trades.